Hi there and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me once again. Now today um, we've had a, a couple of models which I wasn't frankly expecting until after Christmas uh, which is why I said in my um, last video um, the Focke Wolf 90 from Eduard uh, that we were it was the end of the series you know because I didn't expect any more models to come through this side of 2021. I'm very pleased to announce that this, I've now got the second as you can see what it is it's this beautiful Kinetic Gold Harrier GR1, GR3, just arrived from Hong Kong um, from Lucky Model uh, and they came through for me, uh, took about three and a half weeks which is about, about normal I think actually, so actually quite rapid. I, I did get some confusing emails saying that it was waiting for an aircraft uh, this morning or yesterday and it just turned up so <laughs> all is well. Um, but anyway, as I said, I didn't really expect that this would be here so soon, so I thought we'd have a bit of a, a Christmas special. And, and in, in that theme, I haven't gone mad, I haven't got a party hat on or anything like that. I'm not dressed as Santa. I don't have my beard, which I should have probably grown for this, shouldn't I? I've got a couple of candles there, little Christmas candles in the background. Make you feel a bit Christmassy. So, Merry Christmas everybody. Let's have a look at something really special. But perhaps, when you're fed up at Christmas, if you haven't got one for Christmas, no, nobody bought you as a present, really? Well, you're just going to have to buy yourself one in the new year and get yourself one of these. Now, it's very hard to get in the UK directly. There's no distributor has stock, I, I believe. So you're going to have to go to the Lucky Model in uh, in Hong Kong. I found them excellent to deal with. Just beware, you will probably get some import charges, though. So their prices look really keen and very competitive. But be aware that it, <laughs> it's not as simple as that. Uh, and by the way, after Brexit at New Year, there'll be more of this, I'm sure coming from places like, uh, well even from Europe actually, but anyway, we'll focus on the positive. So let's get cracking and have a proper look at this new kit, brand new kit, new tooling from Kinetic, um, one of my all-time favourite aircraft, but if I'm honest, uh, you've seen probably my other videos about the 72nd scale, three generations of Harriers. Well actually, apart from the 72nd scale ones, there's not a lot of great Harrier models, I don't think. I think that they are, you know, the Revell was poor, Tammy, I did a Sea Harry that was awful and very unusual, a real donkey dog, one of their worst ever kits. Um, so there's not a lot of great kits, especially not in 148 of this plane. And now we've got something really special. So let's have a look. So, it is kit number, do, 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 do. it says trying to find it, there we go, Cave Kinetic 48060. And what we've got on the side, we've got a little bit, just a bit of general blurb about the history of the Harrier, of course. This is one of the most remarkable aeroplanes of all time. I should just talk about that first, actually. I'm going to keep you waiting. The Harrier, the world's first vertical takeoff and landing fighter plane. Um, nothing really until the new F-35 Lightning that's come out a few, three or four years ago has come even close to this. I mean, the Russians developed a Yak, was it the Yak-33? which was just a joke, if I'm honest. I mean, no, no offence to the Russians, but this was a very heavy plane. It was, wasn't manoeuvrable. It couldn't carry much payload. It was unreliable. It was terrible. The Harrier was great. It did exactly what it said on the tin. It was delivering a medium to light payload, um, bombs, rockets, Aiden cannons, and of course in the Sea Harrier, it proved itself in the most difficult conditions in combat in the South Atlantic shooting down what on paper were superior aeroplanes like the Mirage 3 and the Super 8 on down. It shot pretty much at Skyhawks, shot them all from the sky. Yeah, Those guys did not want to get into a dogfight with the Harrier because it could do this thrust vectoring thing where it could reverse vector the thrust and basically stop dead in the sky and then revert, flick it back forward. So you could be chasing a Harrier about to let him have it with your air-to-air -air missiles or guns and he'd just suddenly disappear underneath you and then be behind you and then you were uh, finished quite frankly because he'd lock on with the sidewinder and that was the end of it and the Harrier reigned supreme in the Falklands War in 1982. Anyway, uh, some of these, some of the kit, um, the variants that are in this kit actually are um, one squadron I think it is and maybe another squadron that went to the Falklands and they actually did see combat so this is a Falklands, blooded Falklands Harry. Let's get into it. So, other side we've got, and this is very germane to what I've just been saying actually, you've got all these um, variants that are available and there are several. So let's have a looky. So we've got here we've got number one squadron and this is 1970 at Wittering, RAF Wittering. Very much the old school as the Harrier looked when it first came into service. Then same year 
output. You can see that they already started this evolution of the markings to them from the high vis to the lower vis RAF markings, removing the white stripe and the white roundel uh, to make it a little bit more uh, suitable for Eastern Europe and low vis camo. Then we've got uh, two variants that are both very interesting because they're both GR3, the later model Harrier. This one looks, looks just like the GR1 but is in fact a GR3 and was posted to Belize in 75. This one has got the shark's mouth, very aggressive looking. Both got the Aiden cannons underneath, both 1975, but look like a GR1 even though they are a GR3. Now these are GR3s that look like GR3. You'll notice the difference in the nose, look carefully. Pointy nose, sort of more bulbous nose, like a dolphin nose you could say. Poise. So these are GR3s, 77, 1982, and then we've got uh, RAF Gutters Low, it's the, uh, which one is the weapons conversion? You have the operational weapons conversion units here, and we've got the Gutters Low Harrier much later in 82 here. So you've got five great variants there straight away, uh, make it really already looking good, already look, the signs are, omens are good for this kit. Now let's take it, this brand new, right hot off the press, let's take a proper look and see, as a Christmas special, let's see what's in the box. Okay, there we go. Now then, I'll put that somewhere very safe, if I may. Over there, out of the way. Uh, ah, okay. So, instructions. Okay, maybe my optimism is going to be short-lived, because this doesn't look too great, actually. Can you? I don't think you can see this on the camera, but can you see the stri uh, the sort of stri um, what do they call them? Um, there are marks, stripes that are in the actual print. This looks like it's been uh, desk jetted, or even photocopied. It it looks a bit like a photo. Oh, it does look like a photocopy. Oh dear! <laughs> I don't think you're gonna believe this. Now this kit cost what was it? Forty five pounds which is cheap, uh, but you've got to factor in your import duty, so about 60 quid, let's say. Um, but it does look, it's got a crease in it as well, dear. Um, okay, it, I mean, seriously? Okay, let's just stop, okay. Seriously, kinetic, not seen the kit yet. The box art and the box are superb, I've got to say. This is crap, I don't know whose idea this was, it looks like it's been literally, genuinely looks like it's been to prompter print. Somebody's got their one original uh, instruction manual and they've gone to prompter print and copied it. It's the kind of thing you sometimes see with very old kits where they've lost the instructions and they've copied from a master. But that's, I mean, look at the crease here, can you see that? I've got to see you in for this. That is not good. <laughs> Big crease across the middle of the page, yeah, see it? Okay. Anyway, we'll move on, but that's, I'm sorry, that's a big black mark. That's, uh, that's a, we started well and then suddenly went into this, so. Anyway, we'll concentrate on the content. So, we've got, um, <laughs> sorry, I can't go with the photocopying because it makes it look really poor. It loses its definition. So anyway, we've got the, um, the sprue trees uh, in the Revel sort of style. And then we've also got uh, some detail about which parts and sprues, mm, it's complicated, uh, which use which parts, which is a bit tricky. Now, I wouldn't necessarily take much notice of that, I might just want to skip that. Then we've got uh, a painting guide, okay. So a painting guide. Okay, let's, let's stop my, Peter, don't bang on about the photocopied instructions. I know they look crap, but they are, they are what they are. Let's just move on. So, here we go, sorry. Paint guide, so we got uh, Ammo, MIG, Vallejo, not going to use them, not going to use them. Just to call them Tamiya, yeah, Humbrol and Ammo, yeah. I think that they are, um, uh, is it Ammo, MIG that they've got an association with, so that's bound to happen. Yeah, in fact they have, obviously, I didn't even pay attention there yet. Um, as for the others, I'm not sure. They haven't mentioned Ravel, they haven't mentioned AK. I think you might want to just take a view on that. Anyway, let's get straight into it. So. Building up our ejector seat, 
and you've got your pull cord for your ejection system. You've got some quite good detail it looks like here. Uh, Martin Baker ejector tube there for the, the, the jet that blows it up you know, when you have to eject in an emergency. You're then inserting this into the little cockpit tub here. Then you're building up the underneath, which I guess is the... Uh, oh, oh, that's strange. It suddenly jumps. I thought it was the underneath the nose wheel. It's not. This is jumping to the central area of the aircraft where you have the air brake assembly. And it wants you to build the air brake, little spindly air brake, with this little um, hydraulic damper uh, sticking out. I'm not sure about that. I would be... I wouldn't actually put those parts in because I think you're going to regret that. This is something we saw on other models recently. In fact, quite a few I've reviewed recently have all been like this, where they wanted you to build um, parts that were going to stick out. What's the other one? Oh, the Rafale, yeah. That was one. And of course the Italiari Tornado, the big tornado. You don't want bits of undercarriage and you know uh, doors sticking out at the beginning of the assembly of the model because they're going to get knocked off so ignore that build this up ignore the door just put that to one side prepare them and paint them if you want but then put them to one side and stick them on later then we've got the instrument panel and then we've got your nozzle system which is a bit like a bit like the airfix one isn't it actually on a bigger scale then we're on to the two halves of the fuselage sides, which you're going to bring together and you're going to pull in your... Um... Oh, I'm sorry, but that's very odd. It's showing, it's showing here first an assembly that you haven't yet done. How curious is that? That should really be here and that... Anyway, whew, I think you need to have plenty of coffee before you build this because you, if, you, if you're not quite on the ball, you're going to get caught out. It's showing something to be put in here that hasn't actually been constructed until you get to here, lower down. Which is kind of weird. Uh, anyway, it's your fan blades and uh, the, the intake area that's going to be the internals for the, uh, the air intake for the Pegasus engine and your cockpit assembly. And that thing's a slightly strange way here. Um, then you've got a more conventional thing where you've got the um, those, um, nozzles for the Pegasus uh, engine and the the blast protection plates that go immediately behind it as you can see. Then you're going to build up your opened or closed intake doors on the uh, outside of the engine intakes. One of the things that makes it very distinctive on the Harrier of course. Uh, I think you need to pay careful attention to that to make sure you do it the right way. Then you've got your wings and you stick the underside on first and then you build them up from there on in. Then you've got some ailerons and flaps going underneath and uh, the connecting rods, or the covers of the connecting rods. All looks fairly straightforward. And then we have the tails um, uh, with the rudder, which is good. And then you are bringing all this together. So you bring your tail, your tail planes and your wings and you assemble them all onto the main fuselage. Then you build up your main gear, uh, front leg first, then the main main gear, central leg, uh, which has got a double dual wheel and uh, tyre system. Then you've got choices, because you've got to decide if it's a GR3 or a GR1, or indeed a GR3 with a GR1 nose, which is where it gets really confusing. So you need, again, you need to think very carefully and, and follow the instructions, I think, here, because it'd be very easy to get muddled up uh, personally, I'm going to build an early one, I think, probably a 1970 with the later markings, the low-vis marking, reminiscent of the Airfix 24 scale Harry, I think that'd be really cool. And then you've got your parachute pack, the emergency um, parachute cover that they have at the back, which they very seldom ever use, but in case of emergencies they can, because the Harry didn't have an arrest hook, it used to deploy a parachute if it got into trouble. Uh, that goes on the back of the tail. And you're uh, physically putting in your nose wheel and your uh, gear doors, same in the middle, gear doors and the main wheels uh, and the tail, sorry, stable, wing, wing tip stabiliser wheels going in. Uh, another very distinctive part of the Harrier. Lots of UHF aerials going on there and then your canopy. And and that does remind me of the 24 scale airfix, the way that they've, they've laid that out. I'll be interested to see the parts. And then you're onto your weapons, so you've got your 
100 gallon fuel tank, your Aiden Cannon, Sidewinders A A9ML, should say. And then your Matra rocket pods, which are distinctive on the Harrier. And the Royal Navy version, which have got even more rockets on them, would you believe? These are the ones that were used in the Falklands War on the Hermes. And then you've got all your pylons being built up there. And then just showing the relative position of the Aiden gun pods. Now, you have two choices here. You can either have strakes, which it mentions here, if it's the AV-8A style strakes, or you have your big fat Aiden gun pods, which are much more the British style there. And it gives you a guide that you need to read carefully about which you know which combinations go with which. And then oh, here we are. This is when the um, printer print photocopy really looks bad. I've got to be honest. <laughs> So the colour call outs that are not in colour, that's terrible. Sorry, uh, Kinetic, what the hell are you thinking of? This is ridiculous. Uh, because the box art and the box looks so good. And then you get this thing, it looks like, it looks like somebody's done it on eBay and copied it at Prompt to Print. But anyway, all your uh, stencils are going on there, all your decals, shows your colours. But obviously you need to check what the colours are because it's not in colour. And then you've got your Wittering 1970, that's probably the one I'm going to go for. I think that looks really cool. And drop tanks, various options you've got there. Or you've got the Intruder, which is uh, this is the number one squadron that was transferred to Belize Airport in 1975. And I've actually got a cousin who worked um, for the Royal Air Force. He was um, he was actually in the fire service in the Royal Air Force, and he went to Belize and uh, had some adventures there. And, and perhaps a little bit later than this, I think that's 78. But anyway. I digress. And there's another one also with um, one squadron, and this is the one that's got the shark's mouth on it. So I can't can't wait to see the decals for that. And then we've got again the quality of this actual sheet is very very poor. Can you see all the creases in it? Come on, kinetic. That's not good enough. That's stupid. Anyway, um, the operational conversions unit, RF Wittering. Uh, and obviously this has got the, the proper GR3 nose, the bulbous nose, and then various options there. And then finally your GR3, which was on HMS Hermes. Oh no, it's not final, it's normal. The HMS Hermes Operation Corporate, that's the operation to recapture the Falkland Islands. It looks great, that looks really cool. That's another one I might be tempted with actually, if I'm honest. And then finally there's the uh, the Guttersloe Harrier, 1982. So, sorry, 92, thank you. So that's one of the late ones. He's now in the RAF Museum as an exhibit at RAF Hendon, where it's been ever since. Well, that's really cool. So you can go see the real aircraft just north of London at RAF Hendon. Okay. Right. Um, most of that is good and clear, but the presentation is abysmal. Kinetic. You should be ashamed of yourself. That's absolute garbage, to be honest. Come on, you know, a kid could do that in a photocopy shop. Anyway, take a deep breath, let's move on and look at the parts so we think of them. So, I'll just take that one. Um, oh, we've got one here that is off the sprue, which is unfortunate, I hate that, and that happens to me. So what we'll do, we will move this over here, and we'll try and park it in such a way that you can see properly when I zoom in, how's that? Let's have a proper look then. Here we go. So it's nice to have something that's really cutting edge and brand new and to be opening something that most people will not yet see. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a very nice crystal clear bag so be careful this once you've got this loose piece. Ah, so have a look at that first, shall we? It's the underside of the wing. Uh, of the uh, port wing effect, and uh, I always like to do this to put them together. Ooh, a bit strange. So I've been a bit naughty by doing this. I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself, but I think you might enjoy this if I want a closer look. Now, what have we got here? It's a bit of a strange shape. Isn't it? A bit odd. Uh, what I mean when I say strange shape, I mean the way that they've uh, they've put this at a funny angle. Aren't they there. Not sure about that. How does it go together? Well, hmm. It's not a bad fit. Fits nicely. It's strange the way they've done it. Okay. 
No, I can see that. Oh, okay, no, I think it's okay. Huh. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, I just noticed it was a weird shape. Anyway, let's go have a proper look at this upper wing. Let's come back a little bit for you. See this properly. Now then, what have we got? Do you know that? Oof, yes, that looks beautiful. Such fine panel lines, riveting, little access hatches, vortex generators at the front of the leading edge there. That does look nice. And there's lots of cool weapons on here as well. So we've got the um, the matter rocket pods here. And a bit further down we've got the actual heads and these look absolutely incredible. Look at this. So you can actually see on this the rocket heads themselves with the actual matter rockets po poking out. That's so finely done. Can you see that? Oh, I'm impressed, I'm impressed. Then we've got some of the, this is where the uh, air brake uh, internal um, framework is inside the air brake, it goes in there. And then we've got some of the uh, pylon uh, magnet system that holds the weapons on here. And obviously we've got this one, one missing part here. But um, I've got to say that looks gorgeous actually. I'm impressed, I'm impressed, very impressed. Oh, I'll tell you what though, it's uh, what I'm not so impressed about. It's, it's actually, actually popping off the sprue in my hands here. I don't know if you can catch that then, but um, the front of the, the wing is just separated there. I've got to be really careful. They're quite delicate parts, these. It's going to have to be careful. Ooh. Okay, but now that was good. Like it? A lot. Next. Now what we got? Some lovely weapons. I remember this is a brand new kit, it's just coming to the UK market. Only by Hong Kong, so it's not available in the UK currently. Hannant and people like that would stock it normally, but they haven't got stock themselves yet. So, look at this now. Then we've got Sidewinder missiles here. We've got Sparrow. I don't think they. Um, yeah, I think what we've got here. There's going to be later variants here of AV8A for America. Uh, is that Sea Eagle? I think that's, a, that's the Sea Eagle missile. I'm pretty sure that wasn't carried by the Henry. Harry. That's more than what the Buccaneer would carry, but. Maybe the Spanish or the Americans were carrying that, I'm not sure, but not, not, the, not the GR1 or the GR3. So there's, yeah, there's a few weapons and loadouts here that are not carried. Those, yes, not so much these. Not, not these, I don't think so. So that's interesting. There's obviously going to be several variants of it. You've got your pylons there, which look nicely, very nicely moulded. There's no flash. Very, very good. Is that the same? Yeah, we've just got two duplicate sprues there basically. So we'll pop them back together. That's a bit of an odd choice isn't it? They're obviously going to be bringing out a later version for Spain or the American version. Uh, they also use the Harry on I think. The Indians use it? India? The main one. I felt that the Harrier was a plane that should have sold much better than it did because it offered so much. It offered a great deal to an operator. Any company operator that should be uh, should be very very uh, happy with it. I think other countries bought aircraft that were not as capable, and then when the Falklands War came along, they probably realised they'd made a mistake saw just how it destroyed the Argentinian French mirages. I mean, they were nearly all French equipped. <laughs> I was reading somewhere that um, I was reading somewhere recently um, or watching a video, I can't remember, about the Falklands War and there was some discussion saying that the Argentinians were considering buying the Harrier 
in 1977-78 I think and there was some quibble about the price and they didn't I don't know the French made it more lucrative and uh, maybe they could get them quicker some mirages so they went with the French and we all know what happened there um, I mean the Harriers uh, I mean the French Mirage is a good plane don't get me wrong but the Harrier is more modern 10 years more modern and it shot them just down like confetti you know they got into an air-to-air -air combat the Mirage Mirage was faster but the Harrier was just manoeuvrable it was just out manoeuvre it and shoot it down you know. Anyway, let's have a look see. Now this is a better sprue for the wings, I've got to say. So we've got another variant. I'm not sure which one actually. Whether it's one for the GR3 and one for the GR1, I'm not entirely sure. I think we'll have to really read the instructions very, very carefully to understand that. It's great that you've got another set. This time they're all on the sprue. So, again, same comment really. Beautiful figuring. You've got this lovely little vents and uh, grills and the vortex generators that looks beautiful the panel line detail is very impressive she got a bit of a scratch on mine i need a little bit of a rub with a sanding stick it's got a, a rather nasty scratchy poo there can you see it just there yeah there here not so good i think it's one of the other uh, the sprue is rubbed against it, but anyway. And then, and then we've got some really meaty parts here. Look at this. So we've got our intakes. Look at this, look at this. Now then, these are nice. Look at that. You've got the open uh, blowing um, entry doors for the intakes. You've got your ejector seats here. Here we have got tailplanes, which look really, really nice. Again, beautiful riveting on them. And then over here, we've actually got the, these are the doors themselves for those uh, air intake doors I just mentioned. So they get inserted, depending on whether you want it open or closed. And then there is part of the uh, internal this is behind the cockpit and just ahead of the uh, intake here, which is where behind this goes your fan, which is here, fan blades. And then some instrumentation for the instruments there. And uh, finally we've got the cockpit itself, the tub. And the back of the uh, behind the pilot seat. A nice meaty sprue that and it feels quite robust. So that was nice. I'm impressed with that. No flash or anything, nothing nasty to see. Nothing to see here folks. Move along, nothing to see. Right. I like the bags. I've got to say I like those bags. Some of the nicest bags that we've had in a while. Okay. Now then, what have we got here? Mm. Another collection of interesting looking parts. Uh, seal the bags in a slightly unusual way. Okay, let's come back a bit. Sorry, you're not getting a very good uh, image there. Let's just get this place away. Ah, now this is interesting. <laughs> what was I saying about other variants? There's uh, what looks suspiciously like a Sea Harrier nose there to me, or a very late version of the FGR7 or FGR9. See that? That's not an early nose, is it? That's a late one. And we've got your um, Aiden gun pods. And I've seen my first bit of flash. Can you see that? There, a bit flashy. Yeah, that's a bit naughty. And then we've got the uh, <coughs> much more typical early version pylons, which look the part under the wings to hold the stores. And then we've got these uh, rather impressive looking uh, 
exhaust engine exhaust from the Pegasus engine clearly been clearly been slide moulded you see that? that's very very nice it looks very very crisp and they're not actually open, hollow but your eye will be filled by that, once they're painted your eye will think they're open and we've got the little ones small ones at the front here again which look very open which is nice and we've got various wheels and then we've got the tyres rear tyre or central main gear tyre and the fronts here and we've got the uh, cockpit surround here back of the cockpit and then this is the uh, area internal framework of the air brake underneath that's quite a nice sprue yeah. apart from that little bit of flash on those Aidens there's nothing there is there this one, I've got some finer parts now so here we've got all the little um, connectors that uh, act underneath there's various lights and protrusions, pitot heads, some very very fine stuff going on here. Um, all the small parts actually, so we've got uh, the yoke, the stick there. Here we've got the Strakes, which again is the AV8 American Marines version. Don't think you'd use that in the British version. And then we've got your pivot system for the engines, for pivoting the nozzles. And then we've got the outboard wings uh, landing gear, retracting landing gear. And then you've got the main gear here, and then various flaps and ailerons here. And we've even got the refueling probe, which is quite cool. That looks nice. That's a nice probe. Oh, we've got the, um, almost forgot, we've actually got the air brake there itself, which is cool. Okay. more to go, one more bag, two more bags, and then we've got the decals and got some photos. So let's go to clear parts I think. Now then let's have a look. Clear parts. We have got here nice bag. Oh they look really special. Look at this. Wow. There's a detonation cord on the main cockpit. Look at the quality of this. That's very, very sharp. Could you see it? I mean, that's so good. I would suggest you probably don't even need to paint that. I think that that's so clear and crisp and obvious that that is um, fairly scale light, really. And then we've got a nice uh, main windscreen, front windscreen here which is as clear and crystal clear as you like that's very very nice those are cracking clear parts, the rest of them are just lights and things but can't see any fault there at all absolutely superb okay and then finally the last big bag uh, I'm going to get into this it's not always obvious where the actual opening is. There we are. Now then. Okay. So. Now, now, now. So, 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 oh yes, 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 I've got to say I'm liking this kit, I just like the look of it, it's big, it's meaty, it's nice, it's got no flash, look at this, we've got the tail planes here, and there's two versions, I'm not sure, oh yeah, one's got, okay, yeah, GR3, 
yeah, that's the GL3 version because it's got the like uh, telemetry probe, probe or whatever it is. Um, forgive me, I'm not the expert on the on the Harrier models, but it's clearly got either a countermeasures pod or telemetry pod or something built into the town. And here is the earlier GR1 version that does not have that. Okay. Here you've got your seat belts, injector seats, seat belt, injector seats. <laughs> Get it right in. And they look. Uh, they look really good, they're very crisp looking aren't they? And then you've got your your poles to pull the ejector seat in an emergency, you yank on those and off you go. Here we've got the intake, uh, the inner part of the intake for the main uh, air inlet for the Pegasus engine. And then we've got the another option of the tub on the back of the um, back of the cockpit canopy, internal canopy. And again we've got more variants on uh, pylons and some ailerons. A little bit of duplication in the kit, so they're obviously going to bring out another version later. And then last but not least of the big sprues, this is a very big sprue, so I'm going to bring you out. Look at this. What a monster. Huge. What have we got here? So we've got a refueling probe, clearly see there. We've got more, yet more intake doors. External intakes look really good. The shape looks great, I've got to say. And then we've got the inner doors, or the inner skin, I should say. And then you've got these different nose options. So you've got here the early version, which is very, very much a pointed one. I, I must admit, I do like, and you've got some optional uh, wingtip uh, landing gear, retractable wheels. At the other end, you've got the GR3 nose, the more bulbous nose, and for some bizarre reason, they've decided to. Mm, that's not so clever, is it? <laughs> they've decided to mould in a pito head. Look how delicate and fine this is. You go gluing that on before the end, and this is going to get knocked off chopped off, lost in the carpet <laughs> and gone forever if you're not careful. Anyway, we've um, got the air brake. Nice air brake there, look at that. Oh yes, very very good. And then we've got various veins and radio aerials here. And we've got the, uh, I mentioned the parachute cap at the, on the tail, beneath the tail. And I'm not sure what that is, that's the gear doors, I think the main gear doors there. And then we've got the fuselage side, oh sorry, I've almost missed out. We've got the, uh, the blast deflector protection plates behind the main uh, jet exhaust swiveling nozzle, which protects the bodywork from the heat. That always reminds me of just corrugated steel, don't they? <laughs> anyway. And then we have the main fuselage, we're going to have to zoom out for because it's so huge. So here we go, main fuselage on the port side. It looks really, really nice. I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera, just how much detail there is in terms of the, the riveting and the hatches. That's ah, really, really nice. Yeah, that's very, very cool. And on the other side, very same, same really, similar. Um, there we go. Yeah, it looks nice, I've got to say, I'm very, uh, I'm very impressed with this. I think it looks gorgeous, actually. Um, what's not to like with a big Harrier like that? Oh yeah, and there's one part I did miss, look at that. I mentioned the American Marines AV-8 earlier on. If you look down here, there is the AV-8 radio aerial antenna which goes behind the cockpit. It's very, it's very distinctive, like a super shark fin aerial. Hmm, okay. Well that's a massive sprue isn't it? That really is a chunky old thing, that's very nice. I like that. 
Okay, well we're almost done in fact, because we've only got a couple of items just to have a little nosy at, which are... Let me just pop that over there for a second. Save your time. We've got left some photo etch. Oh, quite small. It's a very... It's a bit like the photo etch on that scorpion tank I did. It's um, a nominal photo etch set because it's tiny as you can see. Hey ho. So it looks like it's, I don't know, it's going to lead an edge on the wings actually, or, or something. Maybe it's underneath. Um, and then we've got, I think this is actually acting like a mask here for the, uh, the sort of daylight sort of lights that they have on the side, the little bar lights. Um, to show what these are, but there's some seat belts in there as well, and pilot seat belts here. But not much of it, I've got to say, a bit sparse. And then last but not least of all, it is the decals, which we will have a little look at. And they come on a nice big sheet from Cartograph with some nice tissue. Oh, I'll tell you what, these are nice. These are lovely. Oh, they're very, very glossy and bright. Nice colours. A shark mouth, look at that, no messing. I think that's the one that goes to Belize, isn't it? And then we've got some nice cutouts as well, which is something that a lot of manufacturers forget to do. It makes life very hard if you don't have this and you've got to start, you know, trying to get decals to conform over gaps or protrusions, etc. It's really difficult. But they've thought it through. That's that's really good. Um, we've got the low visibility markings here, or the, the earlier high visibility markings here. Same with the tails here, high vis and low vis. And then you've got all your squadron markings within there. This one, the intruder. This is the one that goes to Belize. <laughs> uh, and your ejector seat warnings and intake warnings, danger here. Uh, these are the graduation marks showing the angles for the thrust vectoring nozzles. And then the rest is really mainly stencil work, isn't it? But those are lovely. I mean, you would expect that, you know. It says, designed by Cross Delta and made, printed by Cartograph. And you cannot go wrong with Cartograph decals. They're always pretty much the best. So, yeah, I like them. Those are really, really lovely colours, very bright. Exactly what you want. So, um... I didn't check for when I was looking through it actually was ejected things, wasn't it? I just thought before I get to the end. Um, there are on the reverse side on one or two of these parts I've noticed. Just going back to the tails, that's just occurred to me actually. That there's some interesting points worth noting. There are some ejector pin marks, can you see them? Now I'm just wondering, they feel fairly smooth. But you might want to just be careful because you don't want those. Yeah, they actually feel a bit sort of female, a bit recessed. What do they? Yes, they do. I don't think they're going to be a problem. I think they're going to be okay, to be fair. Um, maybe I should have had a closer look at the wing ones. But I have to say, overall, uh, the kit for me is giving a real good vibe. Um, I seem to be very positive sometimes about kits, but tr trust me, if I find a complete dog, I'm going to tell you. I don't think that is. It looks well figured, it's beautifully finished, there's no flash apart from, I think, two, excuse me, about two parts uh, on those Aiden cannons. And apart from that, it looks crisp and clean and modern, and I think it's going to build into an absolutely fabulous kit, to be fair. So that's the Harrier GR1, GR3 from Kinetic, Kinetic Gold Series 148th. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, in the meantime, uh, before we get any more coming in through in the new year eventually, wish everybody a Merry Christmas. All the best to you. Please stay safe and uh, have a peaceful and relaxing time and hope to see you all again in the near future. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share and subscribe. And I hope to see you all in the new year, 2021. In the meantime, thanks a lot. Bye for now.